The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, the King's Men, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with, ooh, what you said. likely know by now, our hero and heroine made what they firmly believe to be dramatic history in Hollywood on the Lux Theater of the Air. And here, glowing with triumph and swelled with success, eagerly looking forward to the plaudits of their friends, here, speeding homeward as fast as modern streamlined transportation will carry them, yes, here on the bus, approaching Wistful Vista, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. Any sandwiches left, Molly? Well, let me see. Yes, dearie, just one. Boy, it's lucky we're almost home. We'll just about make it. Just one sandwich, you say, huh? Yes. Do you want it, McGee? Oh, no, no, no. You go ahead and have it. No, no, you have it. No, you. No, you. Oh, stop this. Why don't you have it, Molly? Well, I don't know. Aren't you hungry? Oh, I can wait. Well, so can I. <laughs> What kind of a sandwich is it, Molly? I'll take a look. It's ham. Hmm. Oh, ham, huh? <clears throat> with mustard? Well, let's see. Yes, with mustard. Hmm. You don't like them with mustard, do you, Molly? <laughs> Whatever gave you that idea, that's the only way I do like a ham sandwich. Oh, <laughs> well... Uh... Oh, shucks, go ahead and eat it then, Molly. Uh, unless it's too stale by now. <laughs> I'd hate to have you eat a stale sandwich. <laughs> Personally, I don't mind stale bread. It's kind of, I kind of like it, in fact. I do, too. You do? Hmm. <laughs> Let's feel of it. Hmm, say, that ain't so stale. I know. I had it wrapped up pretty well in wax paper. Hmm. There's nothing like wax to preserve things, is there? <laughs> That's what I hear, and from a very reliable source, too. They say that... Oh, heavenly days, McGee, let's quit stalling. Here, eat the sandwich. Oh, no, 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 I ain't gonna. You eat it. But, but quit waving it at me. <laughs> well, don't shove my hand away like that. Oh, look out now. Oh, shucks, you dropped it on the floor. I'll get it. McGee, leave it lay. It's all dirty by now. Well, I know it. I just wanted to shove it under the seat so we wouldn't trample all over it. And so you stand the sandwich under the seat of the hospital. Well, at least we don't have to argue about that anymore. 
No, I guess we don't. No. Here, let me wipe that mustard off your chin. Huh? <laughs> uh, part of it must have flew up and hit me in the face. <laughs> Look, we're getting close to town, McGee. How can you tell? We're sideswiping more cars. <laughs> well, the old town hasn't changed much since we've been away. We've only been gone a week, foolish. Huh? Oh, yes. Well, it's been a wonderful experience. Working with all them actors. Oh, yes, indeed. Cecil B. DeMille. Yes. Did you hear DeMille asking my advice about directing? No, I didn't. Why should he ask your advice about directing? Oh, I don't know, but he did. He says, look here, Sonny, don't you think this would be a better play if you just turned one page of the script at a time? <laughs> and I says, why, yes, Cecil, I says, I believe it would, he says. And he says, uh, okay, put that taffy apple away till after rehearsal. <laughs> Your pages are getting all stuck together. And I says, now, no, never here. mind, now, never mind. I think we're getting close to home, dearie. It's time to put the dark glasses on and get out our fountain pens, huh? Fountain pens? Certainly. Autographs, you know. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> now I know how a genuine actor feels, Molly. So do I. How? Hungry. <laughs> Let's uh, go up and ask the driver how much farther we have to go, McGee. Okay. Come on. One side there, sis. Get out of the aisle. We want to get past. You didn't say please, I bet you. <laughs> please. Hmm? I said... Oh, well, where'd you get on, sis? On the front end, through that little door. <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't mean that. Well, you must have. That's the only one there is, I betcha. Dad, rather, I wasn't talking about how you got on. I meant where. Hmm? I... Ah, oh. uh, sis, sometimes I think you do this just to befuddle me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, I'll, I'll bet you don't even know what befuddle me. I betcha I do, I betcha. Hi, diddle, diddle, the cat and befuddle. <laughs> That's the fiddle. What is? Befuddle. You mean the, the fiddle's befuddle or befuddle the fiddle? Hmm. I mean the, the, the befiddle. Look, sis, as the football player said when they flunked in geometry, I think we better drop the subject. <laughs> you know where we've been? Mm-mm, no. You don't? Oh, come on now, guess. No. You must have seen the labels on our suitcase. Mm-mm, no. Sis, do you mean to stand there with your little mouth full of ticket stubs and tell me you don't know where we've been? Yes. Oh, then you do know. No. What? Hmm? I... <laughs> Look, sis, we've been clear out in Hollywood. Well, don't you believe me? No, there isn't any such place, I bet you. You just made it up. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, yes, you did. Oh, now, now, well, if there ain't any such place as Hollywood, where do all the moving pictures come from? See, that's easy. They come from that little booth in the back of the theater. <laughs> well, if you're so smart, sis, you must know what we were doing out in Hollywood. Must have been in all the papers. Can you give me a clue? Hmm? Sure. Now, what is it that happens on Monday? On, on Monday. Monday, huh? Mm -hmm. Cecil B. DeMille is connected with it, and it's got something to do with soap. Soap, huh? There. Now, do you know why we went to Hollywood? Yes. You went to deliver Mr. DeMille's washing. <laughs> no. Well, come on, dearie. You can't make an impression on anything that small. <laughs> I'll bet she's cute out in the garden in her little sunbonnet, <laughs> giving the bees and the flowers the lowdown on life. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, McGee, do you want me to talk to the driver, or will you? Oh, you ask him, Molly. Men drivers are more used to having women talk over their shoulders. All right. Oh, uh, driver. No, lady, we don't stop again until we get to the station and uh, then... But now, driver... You should have thought of that in the last stop. <laughs> Sit down until we get in. Now, take it easy, bud. We just wanted to know how... Wistful Vista. Oh, I... Oh, Wistful Vista. Come on, McGee. I'll take the paper bags and you bring the suitcase. And be careful now. That rope is coming a little loose. Hey, Molly. Look. Over there at the railroad station. What's all the excitement? There's a brass band and a lot of silk hats and banners. They must be expecting somebody on the train. Yeah, let's go over and see what... Hey, wait a minute. I know who they're waiting for. Who? Us. What? Look, who is it that's just come back from scoring a tremendous success in Hollywood? Why, oh, McGee, you don't Why, think Why, of that... course. 
They probably expected us to be all swelled up and come home in a private car on the streamlined train. Well, oh, but what do we do? The streamliner isn't due for 30 minutes. Oh, but look. We just got time to sneak home, clean up a little bit, whip up a couple of simple, modest speeches, and get back to the station. Come on now, Molly. Oh, hurry. McGee, now how can we get off the train and be met by all those people when we aren't even on the train? A mere detail, Mrs. McGee, a mere detail. <laughs> we'll duck across the tracks in the railroad yard, and when the train pulls out, there we are. <laughs> Why, it's a cinch. Here, boy, take these bags. Get us a taxi. <laughs> and Molly to return, I'd like your attention for just a minute. Here's some great news from Racine. Listen to this letter. It reads, Don't forget to tell our listeners about the new consumer dividend we have just declared for all our loyal customers. A dividend of one-third more for their money when they buy Johnson's self-polishing glow coat and Johnson's paste or liquid wax. Tell every housewife that right now on most dealers' counters, she will find extra-large packages of glow coat and Johnson's wax containing one-third more than the regular sizes. She pays only the regular price. The extra one-third is her free consumer dividend. Tell her we declare this dividend in appreciation of the way she has been buying these famous polishes. This offer is good on all important sizes, pints, pounds, quarts, gallons, and so forth, but only while the supply of these extra-large packages lasts. Tell her to hurry if she wants to get one-third more free Next time she buys Johnson's Glow Coat or Johnson's Paste or Liquid Wax. got much time. Did you find me a clean shirt? Yes, I laid it on the bed, dearie. Did you find yourself a bite to eat? Yep, and I found a half a cake in the bread box. Heavenly days, I baked that cake for my birthday two weeks ago. Oh. Wasn't it pretty dry? Yeah, it was too dry to eat, but the candles were good. <laughs> if I get the wick-ups, you'll know what done it. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? Wick, wick-ups, hiccups? Ain't funny, McGee. <laughs> I shouldn't have explained it. Should have left it for the smart one. <laughs> now, McGee, that train's due in 20 minutes. Better hurry and shave. Shave? And wash all this makeup off? <laughs> well, then, Mr. Muni, if you're going to leave that makeup on, you better touch up your eyeshadow a little. Why, what's the matter with it? I had the best makeup man in Hollywood apply that there eyeshadow there. <laughs> that was quite a while ago, dearie. It isn't quite even now. Huh? Your right eye looks dreamy and your left eye looks sinister. <laughs> well, I'll tell him I was playing a dual role. <laughs> well, say, how about my speech? I suppose i got to say something to the welcoming committee. Well, you Let's should. see now. Okay. Well, folks, that's kind of homey and democratic. Yeah. Folks, I wish to thank you for this tremendous ovation on behalf of myself and my supporting cast, Molly McGee. We're glad... Where do you get that supporting cast? <laughs> What am I, a splint on a broken leg? <laughs> oh, well, Chucks, this is just tentative. I... Oh, dear, oh, dear, don't answer it. Huh? I'll peek through the curtains. Oh, oh, it's Billy Mills and Uppy. Shall I let him in? No, 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 goodness, no. She's too gabby. We'd never get to the station. Why does she keep coming around here anyway? We don't encourage her any. To her, we're just common people. Search me. Water ought to seek its own level, even if it is just a big drip. <laughs> Hey, take a peek at the tender way she hangs on the mills, will you? Yeah. Like she was a campfire girl and he was her marshmallow. <laughs> Quiet, dearie, not so loud. Oh, apparently the McGee's are still away. Well, let's not linger any longer, precious. Okay, if that's the way you feel, Bubbles. I just thought this gazebo might give me the lend of a spotted tail suit till mine got here. Oh, <laughs> really, I don't think Mr. McGee has one to lend you. He always struck me as being a rather uncool person. Well, I've always... You hear that, Molly? I like that. Don't you worry, dearie. You're just as cool as any man in town. 
Yes, Cooter, in fact. <laughs> and Mrs. McGee. Oh, <laughs> my. Did you ever notice the way she dresses? <laughs> Positively dowdy. <laughs> Howdy, dowdy. <laughs> well, there's no use sticking around this, Dot any longer, Cookie. We'll come back tomorrow and borrow McGee's outfit. Oh, you will, will you? Oh, uh, Dr. Mills, um... Oh, uh, may I call you William? Uh, just call me Willie. <laughs> well, then, Willie, and now that we're alone, that's something I've wanted to ask you for a long time. Hey, hey, what's this? I, I don't just know how to say it, but this being leap year... Every day she's proposing to him, McGee. And seeing that you and I, well, that is, that I and you are, well, uh, rather we are. Oh, Willie, can't you see what I'm driving at? You women drivers? <laughs> what is the trouble? Oh, tell me, Willie. Is it true that you sleep with your mustache in a snood? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Well, come on, maestro. And goodbye to you, Mr. and Mrs. McGee. I saw you. <laughs> They knew we were here all the time. The dirty eavesdroppers. <laughs> well, McGee, we got to get a move on now. Yeah, and i got to get this speech in shape. All right, and then get that clean shirt on. Yeah. I've got to iron the slips. Now, I want you to be ready when I get to Now, let me on. see again. Folks, it is with a tug at our hearts, strings, that we come back to Whistle Vista. A tinged feeling, perhaps. McGee! Huh? McGee! Fibber! You know what I did? Huh, what? I left town with me electric iron turned on and it's burnt up me ironing board and blown all the fuses in the house. The ironing board? Oh, oh, poor dear, oh dear, come in. <laughs> well, glad to see you back, folks. How was everything in Hollywood? Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Simply wonderful. <laughs> Great place, Hollywood Harlow. Those people do anything to make you happy. Why, I happen to say to a guy Sunday, I says, Look, bud, I says, what's so unusual about this California weather? I says, and you know what? In ten, ten minutes later, they put on an eclipse of the sun. <laughs> well, look, Molly, did you meet Clark Gable? No, but when we were down at the beach one afternoon, I did sit in one of his rowboats, I did. Molly, that CG painted on that boat meant Coast Guard. <laughs> But if you'll excuse me now, Harlow, we got to get going because I What's gotta... your hurry? Well, uh, confidentially, there's a big crowd at the railroad station to welcome us, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, they didn't know we were coming home by bus, and I ain't even got my speech ready. i I got to get going. Well, hey, wait mind. a minute. I can help you with your speech, Fibber. I've spoken from practically every floor in town. Oh. Now, look, Fibber, all you have to do is be straightforward, sincere. Let them see that success hasn't changed. Oh, I thought of that. And then say something like, uh, folks, we know that one big broadcast is not a real test of our dramatic ability. Fine. Why, we've no more than scratched the surface. Look out. And surface scratches on floors and furniture can easily be avoided by using Johnson's Wax. It's the <laughs> finest protection that money can buy for all wood surfaces. Good housekeepers everywhere say that Johnson's Wax is the greatest... Where are you going, Fibber? I'm going to see if I can have as much success changing my shirt as you have changing the subject. <laughs> okay, okay. I try to give you a little friendly help, and you walk out on me. So you've gone Hollywood, eh? <laughs> certainly is persistent, isn't he, dearie? Yeah, you can't sidetrack side a guy with a single-track mind, Molly. <laughs> Where'd you say you put my shirt, Molly? On the bed, dearie, and you while know? you hurry and change, I'll make a quick cup of coffee. Oh, no, I can't either. There's no electricity. No. Dad, read it. we got more stops than a million-dollar pipe organ. <laughs> I said that line right. <laughs> Ones here. Here's a good one by James Joyce. Smart young fellow. Hikes nothing but double talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, Mr. Old Timer. I don't believe we want any books today. Hey! We don't have much time for reading these days, my good fellow. Our theatrical work, you know. <laughs> oh, theatrical work, eh? What's he in, kids? Burnicue? <laughs> No, we ain't in Burley Q. Heavenly days, I hope not. No. Imagine me, Gypsy Rose McGee. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. 
Well, what's so funny about it? Oh. I suppose you think I haven't got this. Oh, no. I mean, I suppose you mean I... No. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> Oh, why, shucks, Molly, I was only trying to be un... Uh, well, you up... Uh, well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Who? Me, Johnny? Yes, you. As the lumberjack says to the redwood tree, I think you've been standing around here long enough. <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But I hear a slightly different version. <laughs> different version I hear. One fella says to tell a fella, say, he says, I see where this Fibber McGee and Molly have been on the air for Johnson's Wax five years next week. That so, says tell fella. I like that program. I like it because it's clean. <laughs> well, says the first fella, why shouldn't it be? They're just about washed up. <laughs> If you kids are in show business, how about buying a good scrapbook? Oh, that's an idea, McGee, a scrapbook. Now you're talking, old-timer. Give us the best one you got. Here you are, Johnny. Two bucks. Thanks. Here's two dollars. Much obliged. For 50 cents more, I'll leave my right thumb for a bookmark. <laughs> so long, kids. <laughs> well, Mom, our first scrapbook. Why, that dirty... Why, what's he mean, scrapbook? Why, what is it? Look. How to box in ten easy lessons. <laughs> the King's Men singing a medley from Pinocchio. Why does the gay little dicky bird sing? Cheat, 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 cheat. Who put the thing in the butterfly's wing? Mm-hmm. What's the reason for the smile of the troubadour? Why does the breeze have a bell of fun? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Even the bee who's the son of a gun. Here's the wherefore and the why. You got no strings, neither have I got no strings to hold me down to make me fret nor make me fall. I had strings, but now I'm free. There are no strings on me. I hold, I hold the merry old. I'm as happy as I can be, and I want, I want you all to know nothing ever worries me. I've got no strings, so I have fun. I'm not tied up to anyone. How I love my liberty. the call for a cab, Doc? Why, uh... <laughs> yes, I am, bud. What's this Ronald business, McGee? Oh, oh, well, shucks, what kind of a name is Fibber for a big actor? <laughs> I was just trying out a couple of new ones, is all. Get in, Molly. Where to, Doc? Now, look, bud, we want to go to the Union Station in a hurry. Yes, we're coming in on the streamliner and some people are meeting us. Now, wait a minute, lady. You just coming in on the streamliner? <laughs> Well, we really come by bus, you see. We're not here yet. Where are you? We're on the train. You just want to go down to the station? Huh? That's the idea, bud. Now, they don't realize we got here before the train did. 
<laughs> so, uh, so you got here before the train did? Yes, and it's due any minute, so hurry. Look, Doc, I don't like to be pedantic, you know what I mean? But if you is going to meet a train, which you is riding on, how can you get us off long enough to meet your fellows coming in? <laughs> Look, Bud, time's a wasting. Let us worry about the more abstruse aspects of the case. <laughs> You just get us down to the station in time for the streamliner. Okay, Doc. Here you are. Dollar <laughs> 40. Okay, bud. Here you are. And five minutes to spare, too. Please, thanks. I hope the train ain't late so you don't keep yourself waiting. <laughs> Come on, Molly. We'll sneak around this way and walk a block or so up the track. Oh, and... look, McGee. Huh? They're raising the welcome banners. The train must be about due. Aren't you excited, Dee? Oh, yeah, kind of. Folks, we're glad to be back among with you. Or no. <laughs> Folks, this tremendous ovation. Oh. Come on, Molly. Let's sneak a little closer to the crowd. There's, there's so many we won't be noticed. Uh, keep your hat down over your eyes, dearie, so they won't recognize you. Okay. They're so happy to welcome us back. It'd be a shame to spoil everything for them. <laughs> uh, have they got our names spelled right on them banners? Well, I don't dare look, McGee. I don't want to be seen. Molly, you know you're disappointing all these people. We'll tell them we got in early. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, here we are. Here. Oh, here's Gildersleeve. Uh, hey, Gildersleeve, here we are. Well, hello, folks. <laughs> Wasn't it wonderful? Uh, did you see her? Uh, wait a minute. Where's everybody going? Tell them to come back. He, he, see who? Mrs. Roosevelt. She just passed through on the streamliner. <laughs> dear, and I thought this was my day. <laughs> well, it certainly was an inspiring sight, McGee. Uh, yeah. Well, come on, Ma. The balloon's gone up. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I see you're all dressed up and have your suitcases with you. Uh, are you going someplace, McGee? Going? We've been. Uh, be, uh, is that so? Say, didn't you listen to the Lux Theater of the Air? Uh, didn't you hear that big dramatic play they did? Didn't you pay attention when Cecil B. DeMille introduced the stars? Why, no, I didn't. In fact, nobody in town did, McGee. What you mean? Well, some darn fool went away from home and left an electric iron on and blew out every fuse in town. <laughs> Before Tipper and Molly return, I'd like to say a word about beauty. Smart women know that it's important for them always to look their very best for their own satisfaction and to make the proper impression on their friends. That's the reason for facials and permanence and all stuff like that there, as Fibber would say. Smart housekeepers know, too, that it's important to have their homes as attractive as possible. This doesn't mean expensive furnishings. It can be accomplished easily with very slight expense by giving floors, furniture, and woodwork that rich, mellow, glowing beauty that comes with the regular use of genuine Johnson's Wax. Johnson's Wax protects as well as beautifies, and it saves housework throughout the year. Dust and dirt cannot collect on a smooth wax-polished surface. That's why Johnson's Wax has so many extra uses for protecting windowsills, lampshades, picture frames, leather goods. You can make your home more attractive and save yourself work with a regular use of genuine Johnson's Wax, paste or liquid. <laughs> Next week, we've been five years on the air for Johnson's Wax. Funny you should mention that. I just got a telegram about it from one of our listeners. Did you really? What did he say? Oh, here, I got it with me. He says, my family have listened to you faithfully for past five years. Feel that there is strong bond between us. Oh, isn't that sweet? Yeah, but listen. He says, because we never go anywhere on Tuesday night, and neither does your program. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Marlowe Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you all to join us 